So one question I get asked a lot is Manuel, what laptop should I buy? Hopefully this video answers your question. I'm Michelle Manuel and welcome to Tech Haven. When going in for a laptop, there are a few questions I like to ask the person. Number one, what operating system are you used to? Now, the first operating system I like to talk about is Windows. Windows is the best for all rounders, right? A lot of students prefer Windows because most of the apps they use in school or programs they use in school are supported with Windows. So if you have been using Windows for a while, you should probably go in for Windows. It's best for people who are also beginning. The second one I want to talk about is Mac OS. Now, if you have been in the Apple ecosystem for a while now, you should also stay to Mac OS. Or if you are using an iPhone and iPad, because Apple has this integrated ecosystem, it's easy to share files in between and switch the devices to an in and out. So I recommend you going for a Mac PC when you are in the Apple, Apple ecosystem. Apple ecosystem. The third one I want to talk about is Chrome OS. Now, Chrome OS has been advertised to be good for students. However, it's getting very difficult for me to recommend it to students. This is because even though it's okay it doesn't really not really powerful it's very limiting you need internet connectivity for a lot of things so if you don't really have internet connection almost every time you are limited with a laptop it can run a whole lot of apps software that uses could probably you might not be able to use it so chrome OS is very limiting and it's very difficult for me to recommend so i'll probably prefer that you go in for mac or windows now the fourth category i like to talk about is the others which are Linus and Ubuntu. Now, if you're watching this video and you want those kind of operating system, then you probably don't need this video at all because you already know what you're going in for, right? So these are the three main operating systems that you can go in for. So Windows, if you are if you are used to Windows, Mac, if you're in the Apple ecosystem, and Chrome OS, which I can recommend now. The second question I like to ask the student is, what size of laptop do you prefer? Now we have three categories. The first category is 13 inch laptops now you have a size something like this right now 13 inch laptops are the sweet spot for portability a lot of students prefer this because it is light and you can put in your bag carry it around because it's that light but then people who like to do more intensive stuff like gaming and stuff they don't prefer 13 inch however for most students i prefer i prefer to recommend 13 inch laptops for them because it's very portable and you can take it around easy the second category of laptops i like to see, talk about is the 15 inch and the 17 inch laptops now as the name suggests they are about 16 and 17 and 15 inch in diagonal length right so these ones are usually more powerful than their 13 inch counterparts and they are preferred by media production people which are the video editors and the photo editors and gamers because they like a big screen real estate to work with so these ones are more powerful as i mentioned they usually have graphics card and then they are for more intensive work Final screen size of laptops I like to talk about is the 10 and 12 inch laptop. Now these are for the people who value portability over everything else because these ones are usually less powerful than their 15 and 13 inch counterpart. These are for the students who like to put their laptops in their purses, you know, and take them to class. So people who value portability over everything else because it's not really powerful, it's just for basic um, productivity stuff like web processing, browsing and stuff. So those who value portability over power and the rest. They, their size is the 13, the 12 inch and the 10 inch laptop. Now the third question you should ask yourself is, what kind of power do you need? Now for this, I would like to, for you to categorize yourself into two. The first category, which is category A, is for the students or the people who don't do too much intensive stuff on their laptop. So basic browsing, maybe as a student, maybe solid work, just a few gaming. You don't really do intensive work on it, right? That's for category A, so the average user, as I'll put it. Now category B is for the students who used to like to run Premiere Pro, Blender, like those people who are into gaming, like those people who use their laptop for heavy stuff, like more intensive stuff, that's category B. So place yourself in these categories as you move on. Now. If you are in category A, when you are going in for a laptop, I prefer you go for, if it's Intel, you go for a laptop which is U processor. As you can see, the U processors are usually for people who are not really intensive into gaming or processor intensive people, right? So 
for basic productivity, light gaming and stuff is good for you. However, if you're in the second category, which is the power users, you should go in for the ones with an HK at the end because these ones are built for power, right? Even though they are less um, battery efficient, they are usually more powerful and can handle your day-to-day -day tasks with your productivity and stuff. Now, if you're in the first category, which is the average light users, you should, your RAM capacity should be at least 8 gig. That's the sweet spot for you guys because Anything less than 8 gig, you're going to, get, going to get problems in the long run. However, if you are if you have something above 8 gig and you're in the first category, it's alright. If you're in the second category, you should go in for at least 16 gig because the kind of work you do demands a lot and a lot of power. So you need a lot of RAM to be able to handle it. If you don't understand what RAM does, I recommend you watch our video which I'll link in one of these corners and you can go and understand what it does. However, if you're in the second category, you need a graphics card because the kind of work you do is very intensive and you need an external, a, a dedicated graphics card to be able to help you in your work. So the two I recommend is the Nvidia GeForce lineup and the AMD Radeon lineup, which will really help you in getting your tasks done, especially for video editing, photo editing and gaming. These ones help push the, the, the processing power of the entire system so that you can get the best out of your PC. Also, the kind of storage system you have is very important. Now, there are two categories. You have the HDD and the SSD. Now, the SSDs are faster than the HDDs because SSDs don't have any moving part. However, HDD does. So when you're loading up from memory, when you're loading up from the hard drive, like when you put on your laptop press and open up, SSD will usually be faster because they are faster, right? So when you're going for a laptop, I recommend now in 2020 and above, if you are going to get any laptop, make sure it's SSD. Usually, they have a hybrid mix. So sometimes you get a laptop, it has SSD and HDD. So you can put the apps that you frequently open in the SSD and the ones you don't frequently open, like your movies and stuff in the HDD because you don't really need it to open fast when you're using them. Another very important thing you should take into consideration is the port selection. Now, if you know that you don't like carrying wires around, get a laptop that has the ports you need. Because recently, laptops that have come, they ditch all the main ports and only put in Type-C. Now, Type-C is good because in Type-C, you can, you can connect a lot of other stuff to it, but you need things that are called dongles. And not everybody likes dongles, not everybody likes wires. So if you know you don't like wires, get a laptop that has all the ports. Usually these ones are Windows laptops because all the new Macs are all Type-C. So make sure you have a lot of ports as you can see. You, have, you need your HDMI network card, full size USB. If you need all of these, you really need them and you don't like wires, you should probably get one that has all the ports. So when you're going to buy, just check whether they have these ports and get them. However, if you're going for ones that are quite slim, which have only Type-C, you get dongles, a lot of dongles. You have to live with wires. It's going to help your life. Thank you very much. Now the seventh thing is the keyboard, the sound and the trackpad. I put them all in one because they're very important. Now, the keyboard is very important. A very bad keyboard experience when typing can ruin your whole experience with your laptop. So we're not going to get a laptop, I, I prefer that you research the, the keyboard. Now, when it comes to keyboards, there are two factors. There's key travel and the key spacing. Now, key travel is basically the distance between when you start clicking the key and when it registers in the laptop as a click right so usually the old macbook which is like from 2011 onwards they had a keyboard called the butterfly keyboard now these ones had very very low key travel so it is you don't feel like you're clicking something it just feels like almost like a flat surface which a lot of people don't like and also has a lot of problems so if you know you don't like those kind of keyboards probably get some other keyboard most of the other keyboards have okay millimeter travel now there's also key space now key spacing is basically the spacing between the individual keys on the keyboard. Some people like it congested, some people like it spaced. Now, the small laptops have to congest it because of their space, like a 13 inch laptop. However, the 17 and the 15 inch laptop, they are well spaced because they have a lot of space to work with. Now, when it comes to sound, usually MacBooks have the best sound quality, in my opinion. However, you may be subject to your own opinion, but in my opinion, from my testing, I realized that MacBooks usually have the best sounding speakers. Also, trackpad. MacBooks again have the biggest trackpad, but then that's very subjective. I personally don't like big trackpads. You might probably like big trackpads. So when you're going for a, track, a laptop, you're just checking the track, kind of trackpad that suits your need. I prefer something medium, some people prefer large, some people prefer small. So just check 
and see whether it suits your need. Also, another thing I want to mention is that Lenovo, I think, in my opinion, also has the best keyboard experience. It has very good key spacing and very good key travel. So when you're going to get a laptop Windows and you think you want the ultimate or the best keyboard experience, in my opinion, I think they're from Lenovo. However, Microsoft and the others also have very good keyboards. Now, the fourth question you should ask yourself is the build quality. Is the build quality of the PC good? Now, this is one aspect that is overlooked, but then it's very, very important. As a student as I am, I open my laptop more than 30 times a day. So the kind of hinge that is inside the laptop is very, very important because you need to be able to let it open and close a lot of times during the day. Now, unfortunately, some of the companies don't produce good hinges. I'll come to that later. But then the hinge mechanism of the laptop is very important. So you should be able to open it more than 30 times a day, basically, because as a student or even a regular user, I have to make sure it's going to be last for a long time. Now, unfortunately, HP has been having a lot of these problems lately because I don't know why, but their hinges are very, very, very bad in my opinion. Because the last semester, for instance, I had over 30 laptops at my end that needed fixing because the hinges were spot and all of them, all of them were HP laptops. So I don't know if HP will see this video and then probably work on it, that's fine. But then it's very, very difficult for me to recommend HP, especially their Envy, their Pavilion, and their Spectre, their old Spectre model. Some of them are good, but then generally, generally HP laptops, their hinges are quite bad. However, when it comes to build quality, there is no argument that you, Macs usually have the best build quality. Like when you hold it, it feels good in the hand. When you open the hinge with one hand, everything feels premium, right? That's the thing about Apple. When you go in for that, you know you're going to get the best build quality. So generally, Apple have the best build quality. However, on the Windows side, most of them have now good, now have good. Qu However, on the Windows side, most of them now have good build quality. So we have the Microsoft Surface lineup, we have the Dell, we have Asus, we have Acer, we have Razer, we have Lenovo, we have a whole MSI and a whole lot. So these laptops usually have good build quality and I can recommend them easily. However, HP, unfortunately, is very difficult for me to recommend. Now the final thing, and I think it's the most important, but I decided to put it last, is the price. Now I really don't want you to consider price first when you're going to get your laptop, because honestly, if you consider price first and go and get a laptop that you don't like, you, you will regret your action, right? So what I like you to do is that when we go through all the specs and you pick the one that you need, arrange them in order of priority, right? And make sure you get at least your top three right and ask when you go to the store, ask them, which laptop has this, this, and this, and comes at this range of price, maybe $700,000. Because if you decide to go in for price first, probably you might not get what suits you. So right, get your priority, your top three things, and get the laptop that fits into the category that does well in the top three priorities that you have, right? So I won't really recommend you thinking about price first when you go in for a laptop because you probably might regret your action. So guys, this is a wrap. I hope I helped you a lot in terms of getting a laptop. So let's go through them one, then for all, and then we are done. So the first question, ask yourself, what operating system do you want? Second question, what kind of power do you need? Third question, what kind of display size you need? Then what kind of display? Then what kind of connectivity, like the port selection and the price, then the keyboard sound and the trackpad? If you ask yourself these questions, arrange your priorities and make sure the top three you get them inside your laptop by all means because these are the three those are the three things that are most important so until next time guys i'll see you later and make sure you subscribe you like you share with your friends because i know a lot of people need this kind of information around get it to your friends who are now coming into maybe university or they're going to the workspace and they need a laptop share with them and let's help spread the word and help spread tech to everybody so until next time, I'll see you. Bye-bye.